Welcome to our first day of organic chemistry. In grade 11 and most of grade 12 phys, uh, chemistry, all we've learned about so far is inorganic chemistry. An example of inorganic chemistry would be a sodium chloride. Now, inorganic chemistry involves when you take a cation, in this case sodium, and you take an anion, which in this case is chlorine, and you bring them together. And their positive and negative charging through ionic bonding results in ionic compound. We name those with inorganic rules. With organic chemistry, what we're going to talk about is primarily carbon-based materials. So it's going to be carbon covalently bonded to things like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Now what I've got right here on your screen, and you have this blank in front of you, is you've got the entire outline of the unit. Don't worry about copying all this out right now. What you want to focus on is this right here, because this is going to be our entire lesson today. We're going to be looking at having a lesson for every one or two of these. So we're going to talk about alkanes. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to know how we write this out. So the first example we're going to do is we're going to talk about propane. Now propane is the stuff that you're full of, that is in your barbecue. And that has the formula of C3H8. So if we were to draw that out, what that means is we've got a carbon bonded to two other carbons and hydrogens all around it. Now that takes a long time to draw out, so you may not want to do all that detail. Instead, you may want to consider using the condensed form. Now how does that work? I want you to notice right here, we've got a carbon near three hydrogens. If that's the case, our first spot will be CH3. Then we've got this piece right here in the middle, where it's a carbon attached to two hydrogens. Therefore, that's going to be CH2. Finally, at the end here, you've got a carbon with three hydrogens, and that comes down to CH3. There are even faster ways to write this out. We can use the line method, and the line method for propane looks like this. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, this tip right here represents the CH3. This middle piece here represents CH2. And this last piece here represents CH3. We're going to be using all three of these uh, ways to label them as we go throughout our unit. Now what we've got right here, this giant piece right here, is going to be the pattern we fall for all, follow for all naming for organic chemistry. Now I don't want to go through every detail of the entire unit, so what I want to focus on right here today is the root. The first thing we're going to talk about the root is the root is where we have the name for the longest carbon chain. Now the way you can think of organic chemistry is that organic chemistry always has molecules attached to molecules. If you want to picture attaching one Lego block to another to another, you've got a pretty good analogy on how this works. So when we're naming the longest carbon chain, you have to keep in mind that the longest has to include all functional groups. Now the functional groups are like the Lego pieces. So whatever we name the chain, it has to include all of these pieces on here. So I'm going to flip to the next slide here. And I want to look at the naming of how we name the longest chain. And you can see we have a whole bunch of prefixes right here. And you'll see they go in order. Now if we have a prefix of meth, what that implies is we have one carbon. If we have a prefix of F, that means we have two carbons. If we have prop, we have an example of three, and so on. So this is how we're going to name the first part of our carbon chain. We haven't talked about how we're going to name the second part of our carbon chain. So if we want to flip back to the previous page for a moment, I want to take a look at the functional groups. Now, the ending of it has to identify the bond types. Now, 
Now, if you remember when we're talking about covalent bonds, we know that there can be examples of single, double, or triple bonds. And we need to have a way to name that. Now, there will be other examples later on in the unit, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I want to focus simply on our lesson for today. So, when we have an ending of ain, what this implies is that all of our bonds are going to be single bonds. So, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video right now, and I want you to see if you can figure out on your own what pentane is going to look like. Okay, I'll assume at this point that you've been able to try pentane, and you'll see that the answer is, is we can see it's a molecule that's just appeared in front of us. Now the formula here, if we count, we can count that there are 5 hydrogens, so it's C5, and we can count that there are 12 hydrogens, H12. We know that because the ending was in ane, that all of these had to be single bonds. So there's our pentane. Yet again, this is a lot of work. So we're going to try writing the condensed formula, which looks like that. That would be our example of the condensed version. If we want to draw our line version, it's very simple. It's going to look like that. Now, naming is going to get a little bit more complicated than this, so I want to instead talk about what we have here, the alkyl groups. These are basically carbon subgroups off of our main chain. So, for example, if I wanted to have 2-methyl-butane, how would I draw that out? Well, butane, we know, is going to be 4 carbons. Ain implies that it's all single bonds, so we know we've done it correctly here. Now this part where it says 2-methyl, what this means is that at the second carbon, we are going to have to draw a methyl group. And what is a methyl group? It's CH3. Now if we were to draw this example as a condensed version, that would look like to me CH3, CH, CH2, CH3, and then CH3. Now when you're numbering them, what the numbering is going to be is that you're always going to name it, number it in the order that gives us the lowest number, the largest carbon chain. Now the last thing I want to say before we move on, if we're going to go back to the original slide, is at the beginning what we just described there, that was an example of a substitute. What we're going to talk about today and there are many examples of this, but we're going to simply focus on alkyl groups. We're going to focus on the alkyl groups that are attached. Now, what's important with these is that we list the number position. Now, what if you have multiple chains with multiple names? What's important when you're doing this is that it goes in alphabetical order. So location numbers. Carbon chains are numbered to show which carbon the functional groups, branches, and substitutes are attached to. Chains are numbered so that the most important piece has the lowest number. Now, these two pieces are important, but they're not going to be important today. So don't cross it out, but for now, we're not going to talk about it. Okay, now linkage groups can be numbered in any direction. What you're ultimately looking to do is the side groups that are attached have the lowest numbers. Now, let's talk about some examples here. Now, here's our chains. We talked about this already, what they all look like. And alphatic hydrocarbons are large carbon chains surrounded by hydrogens. They can contain single, double, or triple bonds, but we're not going to look at the double or triple bonds today. So if we look at this example right here, you have to look at the multiple ways that I could count this. I could count this chain from left to right, in which case we've got 1, 2, 3, 
four carbons. Are there other ways I could name it? I could name the carbon instead going this way, which would make this one, two, three, four. Alternatively, I could count it this way, one, two, three. So what is the correct way to number it? The correct way to number it is whatever gets you the largest number. So in this particular case, it doesn't matter if we follow the green, the green pathway or the blue pathway. Both are give you the same answer. So we know already that we have four, so it is going to be a butane. What this leads us to is this piece right here. Now, according to the way I counted it right now, this would make it three methyl butane. Is that correct? Well, what if I count it the other way? What if I count it this way, going one, two, three, four? Well, in this particular case, now my, but my methyl group is on the second carbon. So in the choice between 3-methylbutane and 2-methylbutane, I'm going to take 2-methylbutane. That's the correct one. The reason why that's the correct one is that's given us the lowest possible number for our methyl group. Now let's look at our second example right here. Now if we count out the ways we could count this, we could see this is 1, 2, 3, 4. If we've got other ideas, we could count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Our last example was if we were to count at 1, 2, 3, 4. The longest possible answer we got there was our blue answer. So because it's 5, therefore we know it's going to be pentane. So let's erase all these numbers so it gets a little bit less confusing. We've now got... One, one, two, three, four, five. Now we can see in this particular case we have something attached to number three. That's going to make it our three methyl pentane group. So now we're going ahead, we're going to try to number this one right here. And let's look at our various options. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six we can see that there is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And our last option is if we number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this particular case, our red ink has gotten us the best answer. So we'll renumber that 1, 2, 3. So therefore, we know it's 7, so we know it has to be a heptane. Now, did I number it, number it in the correct way? What if I go in the opposite direction? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In either case, I'm going to have the fourth piece be an ethyl group. So it doesn't matter which way now I number it. So therefore, it's going to be four ethyl heptane. And to be clear, this piece here is all considered one word. So yet again, we have to take a minute, figure out which way is the fastest or the longest way to number this. Hit pause in the video and come back in a second when you think you found the answer. So you'll tell that the middle chain is going to be the longest way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if we number it this way, we can see that our functional groups are at number three and number four. But if we number it in the other direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, when we number it that way, our functional groups are at sec our number four and five. Therefore, we're going to go with the blue ink ones. For heptane, we're going to count it from right to left. That gives us the smaller numbers. Now, what do I write first? Do I write the methyl or do I write the ethyl? Well, in this particular case, ethyl is before methyl in the alphabet, so therefore it has to be 4-ethyl-3-methylheptane. So you can see there's dashes in between, and methylheptane is one word. For our next example here, you can see we've got 
a four carbon chain. And you can see it doesn't matter whether they number it left to right or right to left, we're still going to have a methyl group on number three and on number two. So how do we name this? Well, in this particular case, we've got a methyl group at two, and we've got a methyl group at three. So because they're two, it's dimethyl. Dimethylbutane. Yet again, in this case, we've got three, four, five, six. So therefore, we know we've got a hexane. And we can see there's a methyl group at three. So therefore, our final answer is going to be three comma three dimethyl. And yet again, one word. So every substituent must get its own number. So this one's a particularly tricky one. So take a moment and see if you can figure it out. So hit pause. Okay. In this particular case, if we number from left to right, we can see we've got 10 chains, which makes it a no name. And if we establish that, then therefore we've got one at three, four, and eight which makes it a three comma four comma eight trimethyl, no name. So I may ask you to give you the words and you need to draw the picture. So in this particular we, case, we know we've got a pentane. So if we've got a pentane, therefore we're gonna have five carbons And on the third one, we're going to have an ethyl group. And we're also going to have a methyl group. So now we can just go ahead and put hydrogens in at the rest of those places. For our next example right here, we're going to, have to draw a structural diagram for 2-methyl heptane. So hit pause in the video, try it yourself, and then come back. So because it's heptane, that means we've got a seven carbon chain. Now, we know the second group has to have a methyl group. Does it matter if I put it here or put it here? It doesn't matter because both will be the same. So we're going to put our C here. And then we'll simply fill in the rest of our hydrogen. So there's our final answer. Now, in terms of physical properties, they tend to be nonpolar. Because they're nonpolar, they're non-soluble in water. Now, in terms of their boiling point, if you have one to four carbons, they tend to be below 30 degrees. So, therefore, that's why pentane, or that's why uh, propane, is a gas. Now, if we've got somewhere between 5 and 16 carbons, well, then it's going to have a boiling range between 330 to 275. These are liquids. The example I can think of off the top of my head is octane, which is one of the hydrocarbons that's in our gasoline. Now, if we get between 16 to 22, carbon, 22 carbons, we get a really high boil, or higher boiling range, which is used in furnace oil. If we got over 18, we have a very high boiling point range. So this is where it tends to be semi-solid, and the example of this would be candles. Now, if we've got over 26 carbons, then we've got a very high boiling range. And this is an example of things that are involved in asphalt and paving. 